Hello viewers. Today's video I would like to document the process of which we take when machining a brake rotor for a car or such. So this particular one I have them in a set. The other one I already machined but you guys can see the results at the end of the video. But this is from a Nissan GTR that's going to be making a thousand wheel horsepower just kidding probably a thousand to the crank but really for this video that's besides the point as this process is applicable in concept to all of the brake rotors I do and the reason as to why a person would want to have their brake rotors turned machined is because if you brake hard or your brake rotors overheat it is possible or with a lot of wear they will get warped like this and really the biggest symptom of that is when you hit your brakes and your wheel starts knocking or you just feel shaking in your car and the reason for that is because most likely not only do you need to replace your brake rotors or I mean your brake pads but you should look into reconditioning or replacing your brake rotors and usually you can machine your brake rotors or have them machined at least a few times maybe a couple of times before they get, they get too thin and it really will save you a lot of money because especially on a sports car like this I know a pair of brake rotors could you know range from anywhere from a couple hundred bucks for for your just everyday commuter vehicle or you know our normal every average type of vehicle to a sports car where you can be paying over a thousand dollars for a set of brake rotors but anyways the first thing I do is I already have done but for the sake of showing you guys what I want to do is clean up all of the mating surfaces and a mating surface as obvious obvious as it sounds it is an engineering term and that is um, the surface on a part or a component which quite literally mates or the surface that I guess kind of in a way creates the geometry of an assembly or affects the geometry of the component within an assembly so this is one of the mating surfaces where the brake rotor will be directly directly bolted onto the hub I think it's actually from the other side but in this case this is the side that we're going to be attaching within our machine so I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of WD-40 hit it with my surface stone to make sure it's free of rust and as clean as we can get it wipe that sucker down and the other surface that is critical to us in this case is this little counter sink here which I've already gone ahead and cleaned up and I'll show you guys why here on our manual lathe I've already been turning the other brake rotor and really this is a bit of a nasty job because you can see the cast iron it turns into a powder which gets absolutely everywhere it's not very good for the ways of your lathe or your machine so try to keep it clean as best as possible but anyways here we have this little pipe that we mount our brake rotor up against machine it flat verify that this surface is perfectly flat because in a way this hub kind of simulates or this pipe simulates the hub in the car which the brake rotor is going to be bolted onto and then with this live center we press up against that countersink to hold the brake rotor in place anyways guys I'm gonna get this brake rotor into the lathe and as I need at least two hands for that I'll be back in one moment to show you guys what kind of tool we use and just the process. 
here y'all can see what I was talking about where I was saying we simulate the brake rotor being attached to a surface parallel to the surface being bolted onto the hub of the car itself. It's the most efficient and best way in my opinion in this case to get the brake rotor as accurate as possible and you can see all that's really holding in place is this live center which I simply go ahead and tighten it in and it centers the rotor by the countersink which I believe the factory uses to center the rotor and of course we want to verify everything so we go ahead and put our indicator here on the surface that is supposed to be most flat and we just give it a bit of a turn like that and we can see it's at zero there's maybe you know literally a couple of tenths but a part like this it's just in itself it's not going to be dialed in within tenths and the tolerance for a car rotor or how what how much run out you can have is usually up to five thousandths but of course we're going to do significantly better than that we're going to hit zero thousandths of run out it's going to be like a new rotor after we are done so put this indicator back and to do the machining portion of things we employ this makeshift tool that we created I'll grab it put it here for the time being and uh oh we need to get things where they're supposed to be it's a little bit risky there eh but we bring our table in as close as we possibly can take our tool put it on mount it onto the tool post and it's touching the rotor here so going to have to be a little bit more accurate with this because this is a front rotor from a sports car i believe it's over 17 inches in diameter the capacity of this lathe or the swing of this lathe is 18 inches diameter so we're really pushing it but it is a doable job just that everything has to be or comes so close to this maximum you can see the clearance that we have here between the table and our rotor let's try this one more time take it Put the tool in. Let me stop being. Sorry, guys, it's hard to film and kind of think all at the same time. Not that there's much thinking involved here. Let me move that back to minimize our interference, and then we're going to bring it in clamp it down here like that boom tight and we have to make sure it's vital and when you're using a lathe that your tool is centered with um, the I don't know the axis of rotation of the spindle and I already know just for myself this is busted I usually use this to adjust the height but for this tool specifically that you can see we just kind of threw together welded it up that we can resurface a number of different size car rotors specifically for this but I just know where it should be to be centered in relation to the machine but anyways make sure everything's tightened down you can see that I had to orient our tool post and our table in the specific manner and it gets so close things are so tight here I'll bring this in and I'll show you guys what I mean exactly 
few turns. And this is what I do when I'm first setting up the job. I already machined a rotor of this kind. But you can see how close everything begins to get. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be machining out the lips that are developed from the wear on the rotor and then we're just going to be taking our surface pass. So stay tuned and I'll show you guys the cut in action in one second. So there we have it guys, now we have a pair of these refreshed, refurbished, like new brake rotors for our race car. So thank you all very much for watching, stay tuned for future uploads, leave a like please if you did so, as it does the most for my channel personally motivating very much so for myself and of course for the YouTube algorithm subscribe if you want to see more I don't know little machine shop type lifestyle videos whatever comes across my desk my life maybe one day that guy over there I have new plans for it got a little bit of um not so much garage space per se, but some room to work on it. So I'm going to be bringing this guy home and we're gonna be able to actually dig into it and have room to be able to take it apart in its entirety. So that's a little update on that. Thank you all very much for watching once again. Stay tuned. Also, if you all will, um, look up my Instagram page, it's small, S-M-O-L-L -L underscore engine at, at Instagram and also my Facebook page, Small Engine Rebuilds, based out of Western Massachusetts. And there we have it. Have a blessed day, a blessed evening, and thank y'all very much.